Hi, I'm Peyton, and I am the Artistic Director for Cyberpunk Night City. And I'm Michelle, and I'm the Assistant Art Director for Cyberpunk Night City LARP. I have never really done a lot with Cyberpunk. It is very different from anything I've done. Usually I work with more organic or horror-based mediums and genres or whatever. Um, but going into Cyberpunk, it was great because I got to see a whole new world of of a new medium, of a new palette, if you will, of things to create and things to look at and appreciate. I've been active in theater since I was a small child, and I've been doing props and costumes for LARP um, for uh, a couple of years now here in Central Texas. So set dressing is your overworld. Set dressing is where you establish your color palettes, your lighting settings, um, where everything is going to be. It is how you create your first level of immersion. Um, that can be anything from uh, where your lights are, your uh, advertisements are, what kinds of furniture or debris appears on the, on the streets, even what kind of garbage could be back in the back alleyway, because that can all be something that lends to the immersion of the event. Well, if you saw our video uh, that we put out, uh, you'll see a lot of signs, and there will be many, many more signs. That's one of the things that I've been doing a lot of uh, the last couple of days is just making signs, and it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, coming up with signs in different languages and different types of signs. Um, so set dressing is great because it is that huge beast. The thing that's also the downside of set dressing is that it is also a huge beast, so you have to think on the macro scale. So if I'm not... It's not just one small area that's being dressed, it's a huge arena. And so you have to basically like compartmentalize each section. So if this is the nicer area of town, how do I want that to work? And this is the not so nice area of town, where do I create that transition from the nice part to the not so nice part? For cyberpunk, uh, uh, you know, sci-fi has a long tradition of taking something that's innocuous in our world and turning it into something, uh, some sort of incredible technological device, like, you know, the the carrot peelers from Star Trek The Next Generation they decor the, decorated the wall with. And so I just really, really love the opportunity with, like, particularly with Cyberpunk Night City, is I get to pick up a random object and look at it and I go, and go, like, what can I turn this into? Um, I'm a little, I'm a little old school, and you know, I could 3D print something out, but you know, um, I, I just like to go to the hardware store and look around and be like, what does this thing look like, and how can I make it into a futuristic drug delivery device? And props is kind of in between costuming and uh, because you have small props and you have large props. Props can also play into your set dressing. And props are my favorite, honestly, I think. I think after a little bit thinking about it, props are my favorite because they are the, they're the glue that can bind both characters and their costuming to the set itself. Like, I love, I love tactile things. Props are how you, you touch and create and you, you, you inspire the other senses other than just sight. A thing that, that takes a prop and, and elevates it is attention to detail and understanding the world that your characters and the the items that they are going to manipulate um, exist in. So this is a uh, this is a piece of army surplus that was found. This is an example of a prop that we've had. We're going to be using it for Cyberpunk Night City and it's a containment box for some uh, biological agents that's used in agriculture. Two types of LARP styles you can see, primarily these days. One being, you know, a freeform LARP where it's just whatever whatever story happens happens. It's mostly player generated, and you know that tends to have it just it has a more organic flow to it. The other method is that there are mods around to push the story, uh, or to help inspire other people's story. Some props you create for a mod. You've seen that. Other props you create for people who want to take those props and in a more freeform fashion, like like this, create a story with it. Made it so that somebody can take this and say, oh, I have 
a, a drug problem, or oh, I'm dying, or whatever else. Like players are the most creative people in the world. It's whatever comes that they come up with like on the fly that ends up being way cooler than anything that I could come up with. I'm just there to help, and I think that that's pretty great. Like I feel like the the whole of this experience is going to have portions of uh, elements of both both styles that you might see in a LARP. And I think that'll be fantastic because it'll there'll be a certain appeal to everyone. Uh, so, I, as a, an example of something that became uh, something technologically and awesome, but began as a completely ubiquitous thing that we all see in our everyday lives is uh, the eye implant um, canister. Uh, and this was made uh, like we all we all pitch in. So this was made by. Not, not by me, but by someone else on the team. And it's a really great example of how, you know, someone, a corporation somewhere, spent a lot of time and effort in research and development and finding a manufacturer, and they spent a lot of money to create this bottle. And, you know, why should we let that money be spent in vain? So we spent like a dollar at goodwill on, you know, something that's completely ordinary to all of us, and we turn it into something super great. And I just love this prop so much, and it's a great example of what you can accomplish with a couple of bucks and uh, some time spent in your garage finding little bits and bobs and some glue. So I think that it's important that, you know, when a LARP that has mods, you know, that there are awesome props created so that they are there to add to that story. So my goal, my dream, is that, you know, during whatever mod this may happen with, the player can take this and add it to their own story. The bad part would become as if this become would be if this becomes the primary focus of the story and not the player's experience. We're going to be clothing a number of NPCs and uh, featured NPCs. There are a couple of players who, as part of their ticket, uh, get some assistance from the art team. Um, one of the things that uh, we've really been enjoying is decorating jackets with things that light up and glow. Uh, so we've been using a lot of EL wire. There's also EL tape and EL sheets. Uh, so if you see um, someone and they have a glowing symbol on their back that's actually like a full sheet that's uh, that had that's either been cut or has a decal uh, over it to bring out the design and in some cases it's um, like a, a vinyl transfer that uh, fluoresces under UV light. Your costuming is the first impression you leave to other people. It's like like how you normally dress on a day to day can help indicate to people what kind of person you are if you want to send that message. Costuming is a louder, billboard blasted version of you sending that message. Another way that we've been doing cybernetic implants is that we've been using a machine that takes in like vinyl and, and cuts it out for you. And we've been using that to make uh, sort of circuitry patterns that we then um, put onto people. You probably saw that a lot in our video personal belief that I have about LARP is that one of the reasons that so many people in our generation are getting more and more into it is because we like the costuming. It's an opportunity to dress up as something that you don't get to do every day. You get, to, you get that escapist feeling to be someone else, whether it's the main, the main hero, the main villain, the main mad doctor, whatever, of a story that you get to carry on throughout your life as an experience. And that's why I enjoy making costuming for things like these events, because you give people that opportunity to create the character with the pieces of the puzzle that you hand them. I put it on a... it's fine. I put it on a, a slider, just me being goofy. What's the point of toys if you can't play with them? I, there's no point. Okay, I'll stop that now. <laughs> In one of my costuming classes in college, like it was talking about how you utilize co we, one of the biggest things we spent a lot of time on was what does my costuming say about my character? Is my character into being comfortable? Is my character into being flashy? 
um, anything like that. And especially in the case of an NPC, where you've got to be quick, 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 usually. Like, delivering that story through just look alone, it's the first, it's the first thing that should be impacted. Props are the second thing, you know, if they're carrying um, a suitcase, or if they're carrying a gun, or whatever. Those are the next thing that people can seek out to find on you, to know, like, how they need to start off their interaction with you. And maybe, you know, what they can take from from this to know that you're an NPC and that you're there to help add to the story. So we've been working on creating a lot of stuff to provide an environment where our players can roleplay and make it easy for them to just embody their characters where they can have conversations and do shady deals and eat noodles and just live live a night in a, in a cyberpunk world. So we've talked about three elements to this that I am bringing as the art director for this LARP. We talked about props, costuming, and uh, set dressing. My goal throughout this whole thing, for this whole experience, is to take all three of those big monsters of creation and push them into this box that people can come and play in and then you know bleed out of the box to see what they come up with. I'm really excited to see what players take from all of this that we've been working on and make it, make out of it of their own. I think that that's going to be really great to watch.